Hi guys, uh, my name is James and I work for GWI, um, specifically working with independent agencies and how they can leverage our platform and our data to support any sort of growth goals or to deliver a significant ROI. Um, it's worth noting this is the third time I've tried to record this video. It turns out it's actually a lot more complex than I'd first imagined, so fingers crossed this one goes better. Um, Thank you so much to the team at UNO and for everyone attending, for all the other partners for um, allowing us to speak on this. I think it's a, a great opportunity. Africa is definitely a target market of ours right now. Obviously, our partnership with UNO and the, and the great work that they're doing on the ground is testament to that. But over the last year or two, we've seen a huge uplift in the amount of agencies and the amount of brands from the African markets that are leveraging our data to help drive their own business. Um, what I'm going to do today is I'm going to quickly go through a presentation. Uh, it's quite nicely designed, so hopefully it will keep your interest. Uh, and then we'll spend maybe 15 uh, or 10, 15 minutes in the platform looking at a particular audience uh, and delivering some insights on that, just so you can have a live example of how the platform and the data works. So without further ado, so this right here is the presentation I put together. So. GWI as a whole, as with all of the other partners presenting today and all the other platforms presenting today, it's all about getting you the best understand, understanding of the consumers that you're working with. So all of the data and all the data that everyone's showing you today, it's all about providing you with those solid and rigid audience insights. Now, there is differences in the data source, but that would be the underlying factor, and it's the same with GWI. So we talk about it as welcoming welcome you to the other side so over the last 18 months with everything that's been going on it's been almost impossible to keep your finger on the pulse of consumers and how they're acting what they're thinking and how best to engage with them and despite that clients or brands will be requiring agencies to be understanding the consumers to be giving them the best most up-to-date insights into who they are and as i said how best to reach them so we say welcome to the other side, not welcome to the new normal, because the other side is where things and people are changing constantly. This is something GWI look to address. So every single second or every single minute, audiences are changing behaviors that they have. They're becoming a little bit different. They're becoming more complex. So they've got different groups within them or sub communities within them that may have certain requirements that they didn't previously have. So as an agency, you need to keep your finger on the pulse with all of these insights to make sure you're connected to the consumers, which is a hard thing to do. It's extremely confusing, uh, especially as there's so much data around. It's almost impossible to find out a like, sort of central source of data where you can rely on the insights to give you an understanding of who those consumers are, to support your pitches and to support your campaigns. And that is what GWI are here to do. We're here to help you make sense of it all. I'm going to take our word for that. So this is our show voting slide. I know every single agency or every single partner that's been presenting on this will have had their own one. Um, but why I wanted to bring this up is just to talk about some of the brands and agencies that trust in our data. So you can see the likes of Google, Microsoft, EA, we work with Facebook, Twitter, Spotify, some of these massive global brands. And despite having access to more data than anyone could possibly imagine, they trust GWI data to deliver a huge amount of their reporting, to deliver a lot of internal insights, just because it's a credible way to gain data. And that's reflected through the work we do with all the big networked agencies like Ogilvy and WPP, all of the agency, almost the agencies that sit within them will use GWI data for either pitches or campaigns that they're working on. Um, but my specific role, as I mentioned earlier, is on the independent agency landscape. So as a team, as a division, we've grown exponentially over the last three or four years as we've leveled the playing field, allowing access to our data and insights to become much more feasible um, for some of these smaller independent agencies, allowing them to go up and compete against some of these big agencies who have historically had the large budgets and the access to endless amounts of research capabilities. So what is the actual data? I think it's important to talk about it. Um, so a lot of the data you've been hearing about today is, is 
sort of relating to social data, which is an incredibly powerful data source. But GWI come at it from a different perspective. So we are talking about active data. We're talking about active data these consumers have actively offered up. So we work with panel providers ac across the world that give us access to 46 different markets. What we do is we serve them up with, well, we have a globally harmonized survey that we work with these panel providers to release into their markets to give us access to over 750,000 consumers globally every single year. So we'll have 750,000 respondents to our survey every single year. Um, the survey itself, we'll talk about your demographics, uh, attitudes, interests, brand data, marketing touch points, purchase journey information, as much as we can possibly squeeze into it. But the great thing is that the way we, which we do that survey digitally means that they can be translated, all the answers can be translated into data points, 40,000 per respondent. Now, what that means for you as an agency is that it means that you can have all of those data points, all of those insights at your fingertips through our platform. So all of that data is collected on a monthly basis and every quarter is released into the GWI platform which means that all of our agency partners, all of the brands we work with can leverage that data for their own personal requirements. They can mold that data. They can manipulate it to suit pitches or campaigns that they're working on. The idea being that we want to support you from end to end. So segmenting audiences or segmenting large communities, as we all know we need to do, understanding how best to message them and engage with them, and then closing the loop with the advertising effectiveness where we can effectively measure whether or not a campaign has been successful, um, which is obviously great for an agency because it gives you the full capability. One thing worth noting as well, so, so whilst we do have our globally harmonized survey that um, we release, the access that we've got to the 18 million consumers globally allows us to do a lot of custom research. So that's a recontact methodology, which means you as an agency can serve up a particular set of bespoke questions or up to a particular audience to uncover a deeper level of insight. And then you can synchronize that back into the platform so you can effectively enrich the all the, the huge amounts of data we already have with some of the bespoke specific insights that you or your client may have required. I mentioned it before, but, but the main thing here is that you get it all on a platform. So the platform allows you as an agency to take control of all of that data, to have all of the power that it can, to have all the value extracted from it through one single source platform. And what does this allow you to do? It means that you can drill down to the finer details of an audience. So once you've created an audience based off those data points, so I'm gonna use a, a random example, um, or we can use the example here. So this is looking at mothers in India, their interest in fitness. We can then analyze and understand specific data points and not just show the obvious, like obviously they go running and jogging uh, because they're interested in fitness, but go much deeper than that. So where do they spend their time? What are the best ways to reach them or engage with them? Uh, what attitudes and interests are particular to this group? How can we leverage that to deliver a really powerful strategic pitch? Um, and the idea just being how we should, we're showing you how consumers are thinking. So there's a whole load of different ways in which you can use the platform, but the idea is to, to give you the best understanding of who the consumer is. So in simple terms, it's or in layman's terms, it's know your audiences, make better decisions, uh, which is simple. And obviously all of the associated growth and uh, return on investment that will bring. So from an independent agency perspective, and I keep on referring back to my role in GWI and my team's role in GWI is to support independent agencies and ensure they get all of the value from the platform and the data. So we understand what you got, what, what agencies face in this day and age. The market is saturated. There are so many agencies out there all boasting a, a whole range of USPs um, and all nipping at anyone's heels to, to try and steal clients off them or be much more competitive in a pitch landscape. So even though there's more pitches about because there are more brands offering out uh, pitches to agencies, it is becoming harder and harder to be seen within the crowd, basically, to stand out and to make sure you are winning the pitches and retaining your own business. So that's what we look to address. So the idea is that our data and our insights and, and, and leveraging the platform to deliver credible data-driven insights is going to allow you to tell original stories backed 
by our data, backed by insight, to ensure the credibility of your pitch. So this will obviously help you pitch better. It will also help you save time and resource because it is one central source of data. It's one central place where you can go and gain the insights for this pitch or at least lay the foundations for, for the insights for a pitch. Um, and the ROI of that, so we talked about the benefits, but I, I think for agencies, it's great to actually address the ROI. It's you can get more pitches out. So reduce turnaround time on pitches. Um, you will win more new business pitches. Uh, the majority of agencies agencies we work with have said that they actually use GWI on every single pitch that they work on, which is great to see because that is obviously what we want to be able to deliver is just one place for to gain all your insights. Um, and also you can keep them coming back for more. So it's reducing client churn. So it's not just about bringing in new business, it's about holding on to what you have. And the ways in which you can do that is you can showcase a higher level of insight than the competitors. You can talk to them about all the different ways in which you can use GWI data to support them. You can even potentially upsell them on reports that you've created from the data. But there's a huge amount of value that can be taken from the platform and the data, which I'm keen to sort of get across to you today to ensure that you understand the ROI that investing in a platform like GWI could bring to you as an agency. So that's the presentation. Um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to flip into the actual platform. So this is the landing page of the platform. So before we go into anything, it's just good to understand the lay of the land. So down the left-hand side, we've just got one vertical bar of how we can navigate the platform. And in the middle, we've got some other buttons which relate to two areas of the platform. The two areas of the platform, or the way in which I talk about the platform, is the static data or the, the, the reports, infographics and charts of the week. So that's pre-made content. We've got an in-house trends team that are absolutely fantastic at reading the data. They do it day in, day out. So they use the platform to uncover trends, to apply a narrative to certain audiences or certain um, interesting topics to ensure that agencies we work with can very quickly go in and leverage these reports for thought leadership. They can strip out some of the insights and put into their pitches. but it's very much a time-saving piece. It isn't the be-all and end-all of what we do. It isn't the main part of what we do, but it has a huge amount of value for agencies because it helps them save time. It helps them improve their credibility. And actually, if you're thinking about it from a new business perspective, a lot of these reports are just fantastic relationship sweeteners. So if you know that a certain agency you work with or has worked with or you have worked with is interested in a particular subject, you can go into the reports and just see if there's anything that might... Uh, sort of tickle their fancy as such. So the example I'm going to use today actually is around fast food. So the fast food industry is something I was working on with an agency, or well, the fast food consumer is actually something I was working on with an agency in South Africa quite recently. So I thought it would be um, quite useful to show. So if we look into that first area of the platform, which are the reports, infographics, and charts of the week, we can look at our reports. And you can see along the left-hand side, you've got some categories of reports so you'll have access if you have access to the platform you'll have access to all the reports we've ever created um down the middle we've just got some of our most recent ones if anyone is into gaming i would encourage you to um reach out because we have got a huge wealth of insight into gaming so we've got our gaming playbook we've got a particular report around global social trends um, and how covid 19 has impacted them um, we've got particular generational reports but there's no specific theme to each report but we tend to try and have flagship ones like generations and social and commerce and then some which are more topical. So like changing consumer behaviors throughout the pandemic, for example. But if we're looking at food, open food here, we've got this future of food report. So if I open this up, download it, you see what we've got is 32 pages um, talking about the food industry within a health conscious era. So I've actually used this report for a fast food client before, so I, I know there are some useful insights in there. Um, so what we can see straight away is the key insights. So this is just top level. This is like the narrative we're applying to it. First thing that comes here is the fast food industry is under pressure to cater to health conscious consumers. Now, that isn't just a statement we're going to say. Obviously, within the report, we'll back that up. But um, it's interesting that you can already get a narrative from that. So you can start to piece together your own strategy based off some of the narrative we've applied so if i look at this we've got a 
slide on the health conscious lifestyles and you can see for gen z and millennials since 2018 there's been an increase in the number of people who are buying natural slash organic products so from 54 percent to 63 percent for um for the gen for gen z and it's uh, still an increase but not so much for millennials which is obviously great data to back up any conversation you're having with a fast food brand or any food brand around is health conscious the way which we, we should be moving um if we scroll down further you can talk about other diets or if we wanted to filter and actually find fast food segments, we can flick through here. So we've got the global fast food market here um, and health foodies versus fast foodies. So as I always mentioned, this is just using our data so that there's no reason you wouldn't be able to replicate these same insights for your own particular market uh, as this is all taken from our data. And you've got some interesting things here. So the world's leading health foodies, the world's leading fast foodies, which are USA, Philippines. Um, and then some interesting questions around them. I think this is quite interesting around their lifestyle profiles. And we're looking at health foodies versus fast foodies. So fast foodies are much more likely to eat out a restaurant. Um, you can see that uh, health foodies are, they have a slight higher amount of slightly higher audience percentage for who's responsible for food shopping or going to the gym none of these are overly surprising but what you've got here is you've got the data to back it up so straight away you can strip these out and put them into a report or put them into a pitch to, to help support your case so the reports infographic charts of the week definitely keep an eye on them it's all pre-made content so the hard work's been done for you but the main areas of the platform is the dynamic area. So this is audience builder, chart builder, dashboards and cross tab builder. This is where you as an agency can be flexible and mold the data for your own requirements. So the place I would start and the place where most agencies start is in audience builder. So audience builder is where you can take all the 40,000 data points that we collect from every single respondent and start to layer attributes to define effectively your focus group. Um, You've got 750,000 respondents, but that is globally every single year. But what you want to do is you want to narrow that down to just the ones that sort of fit the bill for the pitch or campaign you're working on. So if I take this fast food example, what I would start with is creating a new audience here. Like these, are, these down here are just audiences I've created previously. If I open that up and add a new audience, you can see that you've got your waves of data along the bottom. So a wave of data is any time that data has been released into the platform. I have a button over here, which I'm going to try and move because I don't know if you can see it. I can't see it, I can't move anyway. Um, but underneath here, so that it, these are just waves of data. So as I mentioned, we collect our data monthly, we release it into the platform every quarter. That figure of zero, if you can see it, is going to change as we add attributes or add layers to this. So to add an attribute, click on here, we've got our GWI core survey. So GDRI Core is our flagship survey, that's 750,000 um, respondents or consumers that we, we speak to every single year. So if we take GDRI Core, you've got our pillars of insights. So from demographics all the way through to gaming data, within that you've got marketing touch points, lifestyles. But these are just the overarching categories that will sort of define our survey. So within these, you'll find subcategories and data points that, that sort of match that, but it just helps with the navigation. So if I was thinking about fast food, there's a few ways we could do it. We could talk about specific fast food brands or like I did for the, the pitch, we could go into lifestyle, lifestyle indicators, eat fast food, and just look at consumers that eat at least once every two weeks. So that in itself would be a good audience for like a, a general fast food audience. But actually for the campaign we wanted, we wanted to look at young a younger audience and an older audience to compare the two. So... To add an attribute, look at the core. Within demographics, you've got personal demographics and age. That can be split down into groups or individual. We'll go groups and generations. And we're just going to look at Gen Z and Gen Y for this particular audience. I'll title this Gen Z and Gen Y fast food. I've already got one. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to create an audience by copying this. So you can see copied. And I'm going to title this Gen X and Baby Boomers. Change the generations to Gen X and Baby Boomers. 
So as simple as that, within two, three minutes, I've created two audiences, which you can see down the bottom right. So I've got, so I'm just move my face again. I've got Gen X and Baby Boomers fast food, Gen Z and Gen Y fast food. Huge audience samples at the moment. The minimum that we would recommend is 150. I mean, if you can see under this, we can see there's like 368,000 across all time. So that'd be 368,000 respondents we've collected that would match this bill, would fit the bill for this. Obviously, I'm going to hyper target for South Africa in a second, but we've got a huge sample size to work with there. So the credibility is going to be great. Now, where I would go from here is I would start to analyze them. So we've, we've created our focus group. We know the audience of interest. Now we want to go into dashboards and, and chart builder and cross tab builder to actually understand who they are and what's interesting about them. So I'm going to start on dashboards because it's a nice and visual way just to kick, it, kick things off. So a dashboard is effectively a framework, um, just highlighting all the data points and all the questions surrounding a particular area. It's a very quick way for you to understand specific um, behaviors of your own audiences. So on the right hand side, we've got our selection criteria. So I'm going to select the audience we created. So both of them, so Gen Z and Gen Y fast food and the Gen X and Baby Boomers fast food. I'm just going to select South Africa. So actually you can see all of the markets we operate in. So all the markets that we survey, and we've got over 46 of them. Down in Middle East and Africa, we'll take South Africa here. And then I'm going to click into the frameworks or the dashboards. I'm just going to choose one which I think could be interesting. I am going to start with perhaps attitudes and lifestyles. So what we've got the light blue is Gen X and baby boomers. And then we've got in the purple Gen Z and Gen Y, the fast food audiences we've created. And they're side by side. So you can very quickly start to pick out some insights and th some things that are unique about them. I really like the dashboard, especially when I'm sitting in client meetings. If you're showing this to an agency or showing this to a brand, it's a nice visual way to showcase the insights. So straight away, you can see down here that actually this Gen Z and Gen Y audience, they're, they're, they're significantly higher in terms of audience percentage surrounding wanting to be successful. So 85% of them have said that being successful is important to them, whilst it's actually smaller for the Gen X and baby boomers. So whilst that is an interesting insight, you'd need to obviously back up that with your own creative strategy, but it's giving you the data to support that. Other things that might be interesting is actually in the self-perception side of things, you can see the younger audiences want to explore the world, they take care of their appearance, whereas maybe this older audience, as you can see by I like to know what is going on in the world, they might like to be slightly more informed, um, which could definitely be useful with a strategy, just giving a bit of insight and then backing that up with your own um, your own creative, your own expertise that you have as an agency. Another way in which we could use these dashboards, so there's loads of them, um, but we could maybe take it into more around fitness and health. So all of these data points here will be talking about fitness and health, and we can see whether or not there's big differences between the audience. So different sports played. So the younger audience is playing more sport, is, uh, as you can see. Soccer is a really large sport there. So in a fast food instance, is there an opportunity to partner with a football team? Is there something around sport that we could leverage um, to just take this, to engage with this audience? Because we know that soccer is something which is particularly rife within this audience. Um, and then healthcare brand influences, which probably isn't ref suitable for a fast food brand, but it's one of the questions that we talk around within the fitness and health space. So dashboards, as I said, fantastic visual representation, but where we're going to get into the nitty gritty of the insight, so where we're going to get into the detail is in Chart Builder and the Cross Tab Builder. I'm just going to focus on Chart Builder now because I, I don't want to spend too long um, taking through the platform. Obviously keen for you guys to, to have a chance to have your own tailored demonstration. Um, but if we look at Chart Builder, you can see in the same way in which we've selected our audiences, we do the same thing. So I'm just going to stick to Gen Z and Gen Y here. South Africa is already selected. Um, and then when we look at this on the right hand side, and my face is in the way again, you can now see the same pillars of insights that we created our audience off. We can now profile them. We can now get insights into them using these questions. So 
if I wanted to start off with something surrounding attitudes and interests, you can see within that you've got an attitude section and we can maybe look at brand relationships. So the question is always at the top. So this is the question that is asked in the survey. So which of the following do you feel best describes you? And I've narrowed down, we have multiple figures that we could use. I've narrowed down to just the two that I find most revealing and agencies find most revealing, um, the index and the audience. So the audience percentage is showing you how much of this audience, how many of the Gen Z and Gen Y fast food audience match this data point. So 63.7% of this audience match the data point, I'm loyal to the brands I like. Now, that's fantastic to know, but what the index figure is going to show you, it's going to show you whether or not that is unique or statistically significant for the audience that you've created against the base audience. The base audience currently being all internet users within South Africa. So what you want to look for is you want to look for a figure that is over 100, because that means it over indexes, means they're more likely to match that data point than the average person, um, and it also has a suitable audience percentage. Um, so if I was looking through this and I was thinking about what would be the most interesting insight I've got, I actually think this is quite interesting. So over half of the audience match with the data when I tell my friends and family about new products. Now that's fantastic on its own, but if you support that with the fact that they're 8.9% more likely than the average internet user in South Africa to match that data point, you've got a solid and compelling proposition to put forward to your client that there is certainly a networking element around this audience. It's something which we know that we can leverage as an agency to engage with them. And then that's 14 data points. There's 40,000 in the platform. So there's a huge wealth of things you can look at. Say we were looking at media. So media consumption, we want to understand where are they spending at least 30 minutes a day. And so you can see there's some good over indexations. There's some interesting ones. And this is actually a, a great slide. I hadn't seen this before, but it's a really interesting way to talk about the use of the index in the audience. So if you were just looking at the audience, you would say the podcast maybe wouldn't be a fantastic um, opportunity for us. But actually, when looking at the index, that is they're 32.3% more likely than the average consumer in, or internet user in South Africa to map to that data point. So it's something statistically significant to this group. So that is an insight that you can take forward and say, whilst we definitely need to be looking at online and mobile, social media, and online and PC, laptop and tablet due to the very high audience percentages, if we're looking at something unique to find this audience, potentially we could look at the likes of podcasts or games consoles because they have a very high index figure. It's something which we can definitely look to leverage. A few other insights before I sort of let you go and hopefully you guys can come back to us and look at the um, and get your tailored demonstration, as I said. But some of the ones that I find really revealing um, is marketing touch points. So within marketing touch points, we've got a question surrounding brand discovery. So how do you typically find out about new brands and products? You can see the different channels. So it's similar to uh, media consumption, but more directly asking around brands and products and their discovery of them. So if I was looking through this, I'd straight away see ads on social media, high audience percentage and a high index figure. Well, a good index figure. Um, that would be, out of all of these channels at the top, I'd say that that'd be a fantastic opportunity for us. Um, so if we were taking that forward, we could then look at a folder within social media and we could say, right, what channel are they actually on? So question at the top is how often do you visit or use these services? And I'm going to filter down to just understand where they spend their time on a daily basis. Okay. So straight away, you see Facebook is the top. So for this Gen Z, Gen Y fast food audience, Facebook is the top. Um, however, that actually under indexes. So they're actually less likely to be using Facebook on a daily basis than the average internet user in South Africa, 2.7% less likely to be specific. Um, but Instagram is a large audience percentage and it's a very high index figure, showcasing that Instagram is clearly a channel which this audience finds value in. It's something which is specific to them against other groups within South Africa. So in a pitch scenario, you can go forward confidently saying, that we understand that Instagram is a fantastic channel for us because not only do a lot of people use it on a daily basis, they're actually, they, I mean, it's a big channel for them from a unique perspective. And we can test that theory and, and look at maybe their favorite social media platforms. And you can actually see that Instagram, Facebook, WhatsApp is actually the highest, which is really interesting there. Um, obviously that's not 
as a social media platform as such. It's more of a messaging service. Um, but we can start to enrich this data looking at reasons for using social media. So why are they doing it? So we're seeing what's trending or what's being talked about is interesting. Watching live streams, finding products to purchase. All of these have interesting index figures and good audience percentages, all of which could then be taken and used within a pitch scenario to back up the point you're trying to drive home, to back up the strategy. So it's all about becoming data driven. That is what the platform is here to do. It's here to you as an agency to very easily be able to find relevant and unique insights into an audience to drive home your pitch or drive home your strategy for any client. Um, well, hopefully I've been able to showcase how the platform works and where it would add value to an agency. I really would encourage you to get in touch with the guys at you know. Um, they are experts on the ground. They understand the South African market. I will always be there to support them as well with any um, opportunities. So please do reach out to them. Um, love to be able to take you through a one-on-one -on -one demonstration, maybe go through a live pitch you're working on, just so we can really showcase where the data would add value to that pitch. and You can have an understanding of that yourself. But um, it's been a pleasure presenting to you all today. Hopefully you found it interesting and, and look forward to hearing from you soon. Thanks.